And in today's video, I'm going to explain to you how international medical graduates like myself and maybe you can also match into high ranking programs for residency and fellowship. How to increase your chances to obtain a solid, a strong residency match. So if this is your goal to do residency in the United States, and especially if you want to match into a competitive fellowship or residency program, or if you want to go into a strong academic program, make sure to watch this video. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Randerson Cardoso. I'm a cardiologist in Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm an international medical graduate. I graduated medical school in Brazil, and then I did internal medicine residency in Miami, where I was also a chief resident at the University of Miami. I did cardiology fellowship at the Johns Hopkins Hospital and then cardiac imaging at Harvard Medical School, where now I am an attending. But before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can stay tuned in to more tips related to this topic. Now let's go ahead and get started. So the United States Medical Licensing Examination, the USMLE, is a critical part of the process. Ideally, you should pass step one on the first attempt and get a really high score on step two CK. This is a very important component of the process. It's also a component that's equal among all applicants. So the USMLEs represent an opportunity for you to stand out. You should look at it as an opportunity because in many other aspects, for example, where we graduated, you know, the research opportunities that we've had as international medical graduates, we may lack behind other applicants who, for example, graduated in top schools in the United States. But the USMLE is a fair process. It's the same for everyone around the world. So work really hard to pass USMLE step one on the first attempt and also get a high score on step two CK. Many programs will have filters, unfortunately, to filter out applicants who did not pass on the first attempt or applicants with low scores on USMLA Step 2 CK. And if this is not your case, if you failed Step 1 or if you have a low score on Step 2 CK, we can talk more in another video on how to overcome these red flags. Top academic programs in the United States will value diversity and cultural competence. As an international medical graduate, you can actually leverage these in your favor. Make sure you highlight on your application at opportunities like the personal statement and also on your interview how your experiences as an international medical graduate may put you at a unique position to become an outstanding resident in that program. This is especially true if you can connect prior experiences in your career, or in your personal life with your future goals as a resident in that program. Your rotations in the United States as an observer or in a clerkship will be an important component as well of your application. Your performance during these rotations will reflect later on in your letters of recommendation. This is also an important opportunity for networking for you to meet people who may ultimately help you out in your application process. So on these rotations, make sure to be proactive, take initiative, showcase your academic skill, showcase your clinical skills, and just demonstrate the competence that is needed to function well initially as an observer or a clerkship, but then this will translate also into what they will think of you as a potential resident for their program. Like anything else, it's important that you over deliver on that rotation. Be the first person to get there, be the last one to leave. You wanna know your patients really well. If you're given the opportunity to collaborate with the team in writing notes or presenting cases during rounds, make sure you do an outstanding job on these opportunities so that ultimately you can earn the respect of the people around you. Doing an excellent job in your clinical rotations will of course translate into getting excellent letters of recommendation. You really should not ask for letters of recommendations for people who are lukewarm about you. You really should only ask those letters for people who think the world out of you. And the only way to achieve that is if you do a great job on those rotations. Choose people who know you very well and can speak with confidence about your, eth your work ethics, about your clinical competence, and about your ability to work in a team. It's even better if you can get these letters from people who have a very high reputation within their institutions or even nationally. But of course, if this is not possible, it's also not an absolutely necessary component. When you ask for these letters of recommendations, make sure to do so in a controlled environment. 
In an environment where you have the undivided attention of the person who you're asking the letter to, don't do it in the hallway or don't do it on the go, in the elevator. You want to reserve a dedicated time with this person so that you can really let them know how important this is to your career. And when you ask the question, ask them like this, would you be comfortable in writing me a strong letter of recommendation? This is the way to ask the question because it gives them the opportunity to say no. It's better if they say no than if they write you a weak letter of recommendation. So make sure to ask it like that. There are potential factors in a candidate's application that may hurt the chances of having a match. These have been historically called red flags. They don't carry the same weight, but I'm just going to list some of these. Not passing step one on the first attempt, getting a low score on step two, a long time since graduation, no publications on your curriculum, failing a subject in medical school. Of course, these are just some of the potential red flags that one could have in their application. And here's what I will say about these red flags. If it's something that already happened, or if it's something that's out of your control, for example, time since graduation, you don't have any control over that if it's already been seven, eight years since you graduated. So you shouldn't focus on these and you should work to overcome them. On the other hand, on the things that are still in your control, you haven't taken the USMLE yet, or you still have time to change your CV and get a lot of publications. You really should work hard to avoid these red flags so that you don't have to deal with filters at the time of application season. Some programs will filter out applicants who failed step one. They will filter out applicants who don't meet a certain criteria or fall within a certain filter. So avoid these if you can on your application. Or if you have any of these, you have to work hard on the other components to overcome any of the red flags. So finally, let's talk about research. Just like we were talking earlier about how the USMLE Step 2 score can stand out your application, research and publication is the same. Research experience can be a game changer when you apply, especially if you're applying for an academic program or a highly competitive specialty. Here, you want to have the results of research, not just having engaged in research activities. You really need to have abstracts presented at world-renowned conferences. You need to have publications listed in PubMed. And it's also important that you are first author on some of these, because this will show that you led these projects, that you took initiative, that you did most of the work, that you did the writing, maybe you did even statistics. So it's important that you have a, a good number of these publications, but also that you are first author on some of them. Also, the impact really matters. It's good if you are able to publish or present in respected conferences, publish in journals with high impact factors. Quantity is as important as quality of those publications is as important as quantity. It's not just about having a high number of publications. We previously did a video on this where we talked about the relative importance of quantity and quality in your publications. Of course, there are other components in your CV when you apply. There are things like volunteer activities, leadership roles, and other things. And they are important. You don't wanna miss out on the, the, those points. So make sure you hit the checks box for volunteer work, but those things will typically not make you stand out as much as just having a lot of research and publications. This is a critical component, academic programs, Highly competitive specialties will value this aspect tremendously. Make sure you get publications to boost your CV and boost your application when you applying for residency. And here's a strategic move. Here's something that could really put you on top of hundreds or thousands of other applications. Learn how to do systematic reviews and meta-analysis. Systematic reviews and meta-analysis are strong types of publications at the top of the pyramid of evidence and they're within your reach. You really only need a computer, internet, and know the strong methodology of systematic reviews and meta-analysis to achieve these publications. They hold real weight in the academic world, they contribute to the literature, they contribute to the field that you're interested in, and of course, by consequence, they'll also contribute to your own CV. It's a, it's, a, it's a really smart way to set you apart from others when you apply for residency in the United States. I'm a huge advocate for this method of research because it really transformed my career. It helped me to match in 
great institutions in the United States. And I also see the transformation that happens in the lives of my students who published hundreds of these manuscripts of these meta-analysis and it really also brings the same level of impact in their own careers. In conclusion, aiming for a top program for residency or fellowship in the United States is a challenging task, but it's definitely achievable. Focus on getting good scores on your USMLE, getting good research publications done, make sure to excel in clinical rotations and get outstanding letters of recommendation, expanding with this your network of contacts, and avoid these red flags or issues that may put you in a negative filter if you can. It's really a holistic approach that goes well beyond the scores or each individual component that I mentioned. Best of luck in your journey, and remember, your hard work and preparation for this will ultimately pay off. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and like, share with your friends as well. I'll be very grateful for it. And don't forget to check the Meta Analysis Academy waitlist if you're interested in learning systematic reviews and meta analysis. We'll leave it in the description of this video also. See you next time.